I would like to introduce you now one of the very top company in the US in big data. I think NVP invested a significant amount of cash into this company, and I can tell you when you see the demonstration of a product working on 66 billions of data, I can tell you that it's really impressive to see the speed, the velocity, the usability of the application to build new tables and to look at data in a new perspective. So I really welcome Greg on stage to present this company. Thank you. Wow, big data is really popular these days. I mean, it was just a few months ago, there was a band called Big Data that saw their hit single reach number two on the Billboard 100, so that's pretty telling. Uh, I'm Greg Munvies. I'm Executive Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer for 1010 Data, and I'm here to talk to you today uh, about the things that we do uh, in our unique uh, big data offering. Really, there's three things that we bring together uh, in, a, in a way that no one else is doing it today. Um, first is the technology. We have a big data discovery and sharing platform. Uh, the idea is that uh, end users of big data want the ability to do off-road, unguided, ad hoc analysis on big data. Second part, data. It's not just about your data, it's about all the other data that's out there in the world, third-party data. We help our customers source that data, make it available on the platform so that they can have access to it and use it in conjunction with their data. Third part, we've got a team of industry expert data scientists, analysts on staff who can help our customers use all of this data with their data to get actionable insights on our platform. Data discovery, relatively new term in the marketplace. What do we mean by it? I think the best way to describe it is the following. If you had a thousand rows of data, what would you do to analyze it? I know what I'd do. I'd put it in Microsoft Excel, and then I'd do anything I want with it, and it would be easy and simple. Problem is, there's no security, there's no data governance, and it doesn't work with big data. That's the whole point. Traditional technology stacks have great security, if you implement it correctly. There's really good data governance, and they at least have the ability to uh, store and access big data. They don't have the ability, typically, to do unguided off-road ad hoc analysis on that data. Additionally, you would need to cobble together tip, uh, typically four or five different solutions, uh, pieces of software to create the solution that uh, four to five uh, pieces of software to create the solution that you're trying to uh, create to solve the entire analytical process you're going through. Um, the ETL tools can be complicated. The data warehouse can be a very significant endeavor. You often need teams of um, IT professionals to implement those to make the data useful and usable in BI tools for end users or in advanced analytical tools for modelers. Um, and then, of course, you're probably going to want to visualize your data as well in some sort of visualization tool. Uh, Tenton Data takes the spreadsheet paradigm of Microsoft Excel with the industrial strength of the stack and brings it together. So this is a little bit about our architecture. Um, literally in your web browser, you can have a spreadsheet with a trillion rows. You can have multiple spreadsheets with a trillion rows. You can bring those two spreadsheets together and join them in very interesting ways. You can access the platform through APIs, SDKs, with bindings to most modern programming languages. Um, we have an ODBC driver. Uh, we've got the ability to not just do uh, traditional analyses, but more sophisticated analyses. We have machine learning functionality built into the platform. You can take it as far as doing a Monte Carlo simulation right in the platform. In a minute, you'll see why that's important. The second piece, which is the data, uh, is, is a real big part of our business model in the United States. We actually uh, think it's important to go out and source the data sets that our customers need to use in conjunction with their own data. It makes it a lot easier for them. Um, and we kind of categorize those in three different ways. First is third-party data. That's data that's uh, commonly procurable in the marketplace. Um, an example of that might be data from the New York Stock Exchange, uh, 
borrow credit information from Equifax, um, et cetera. The second is public data. Everyone knows about public data. It's often very complementary in nature, um, but, but it comes in forms that are often not ideal for doing analytics. So you need to do work on that data to kind of prepare it and make it more useful. And the third, more interesting type of data that we source are what we call tenant data data sets. These are highly differentiated data sets in the marketplace, often unique to our platform. We go to companies that create data exhaust as a byproduct of their core business. Some of them, more recently, many of them know that this data is actually valuable. In the past, they, they didn't. And we take the raw data and we, like with our other data sets, clean it, transform it, load it into the platform and deliver it back to customers either as what we call data products, which are highly structured versions and ready to use uh, versions of the data, models, indices, or reports. So why is using big data important? Why not just do what people used to do and sample the data, use panels of data? Uh, Let's talk about one example that we see in, in the financial services market. So we have a ton of customers uh, who are investors in mortgage-backed securities. That's, uh, our founders have backgrounds in that, and so uh, it was a natural place to start. So let's talk pre-subprime mortgage crisis. Most investors were using aggregated information to make investment decisions and monitor their portfolios. However, there were some that weren't. Our customers were using all the granular data that they could procure, and they were not just using one data set, they were using multiple data sets. So they would take all of the mortgages in the United States, all of their payment histories, housing price appreciation information, uh, interest rates, borrow credit information, which by the way, they'd have to join in by building a statistical matching algorithm to do. And they were building much more accurate models, uh, cash flow models, uh, by joining all this data together. And uh, as a result, some of them ended up making billions of dollars instead of losing them. Unfortunately, I can't tell you who, who they were, but you can take a guess. <laughs> so let's talk about 1010 Data, where we are now. As a company, we have over 650 customers. We have 18 trillion rows, that's trillion with the T, rows of data on the platform. We have over 135 employees. Uh, interestingly, that number was about half two years ago. Uh, we have over 1.3 million tables of data on the platform. And we have a cloud-based software as a service model, so we are rapidly deploying new versions of the system all the time. So far, we've done 25 production releases this year. If you look at the growth curve of the data on our platform, it tells a little bit of a story. Today we have over 650 customers, but in 2011, uh, when we decided that it would be a good idea to let the world know about our, our products and offerings and uh, actually hire a marketing department, we had about 100 customers. Most of them were on Wall Street. Um, that's all you get. <laughs> So uh, let me try to understand the business model. So um, what you're doing is quite a lot. So uh, meaning from raw data to clean up to transform to even interpret, or where do you stop there? And uh, so what point the customer takes over? And second is how do you charge a customer? Right. So there's a spectrum. We've got some customers that load all their own data on the platform, clean it, transform it right in the platform, and do all their own analysis. And we really just maybe support and ask a couple, answer a couple of questions here and there. We've got other customers where we're literally running like their enterprise analytics platform. I, I, hesitate to, I hesitate to say data warehouse because I think it's kind of an old term at this point. Um, and we're actually doing uh, analysis for them. We're building reports and models. Um, we try to keep it to delivering insights though. We're not a consulting company. We're not telling them how to run their business or how to change running their business. That's kind of the model. Um, and we charge them at software as a service. It's a recurring fee, subscription. It's, uh, it's it, the, the, the uh, inputs are sort of the amount of data you have and the number of users. 
that's right. Great, thank you for sharing a, a really impressive last slide uh, on the numbers, the amount of data that you're processing and, and the speed of it that you're growing. Uh, it's very US centric. Uh, as you are now in charge of leading that global charge, mm -hmm. What is the number one criteria that you look for in one country that you say, ah, that country could be a good fit for 1010 data? Well, I, I know the thing that, that automatically makes it a, a bad fit. Okay, good. Go <laughs> That's on. clear. Data transfer laws and what you can do with data is a very uh, clear delineator. If you, you know, we're a cloud-based solution, our cloud can reside in many different places. We have many data centers in the United States. We'll be opening one up in Amsterdam next year, um, maybe in Luxembourg. We kind of go where the, where the business warrants it, but any way you slice it, it's going to be a cloud solution. So if there, there are laws that prohibit you moving the data outside of your four walls um, or cross borders where we're not gonna go, that's gonna be a showstopper. In terms of the things that we look for in a good customer, it's really big data, people that wanna do real analytics on it, multiple user types, we want people that wanna build models on really big data, but also have a user community that just wants to use uh, pretty uh, charts and graphs and dashboards. Um, so having a nice spectrum of that. So yeah, Carlos mentioned that that last slide is impressive, but just one little number. How much are you going to sell this year? How much are you going to sell next? Uh, so your? we don't give out our exact numbers, ah. um, but we're in the. It's confidential. Yeah, I mean we we're over a fifty million dollar a year company. This year. Okay. Uh, for next year, we'll be over fifty. For next year, okay. In, in that same frame, how how employee intensive is your business if you, as you grow? What is the proportion of new employees that you would have to hire to cover your customer? Base? Right, so yeah, I think um, we've done a bit of catch up in, in terms of hiring some of the fixed cost overhead. So we're starting to unlock some of the operating leverage in the business for sure. Um, it's not, I mean, we're ideally gonna be more of a platform um, and uh, a more of a platform provider than a services company. That's our goal every time. In the United States though, it was important to prove out the technology in a couple of ways, and the markets that we chose were uh, financial services, which is not very heavy in terms of services, but w it was also retail and CPG, and retail tends to be a little bit more overhead in terms of uh, helping customers build the reports for them and do the work with them. Um, as we look to expand globally, um, we're looking to do that through partnerships like with PwC. We're not looking to create a direct sales force internationally. That's not gonna happen for us uh, in the near future. Um, so we're hoping that uh, as we train up partners, the business is gonna be extremely scalable. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.